Good evening and welcome to the North Star Network tonight for Section 3 Class B Boys Lacrosse Final between the West Genesee Wildcats and the FM Hornets. I'm Drew Matiasic alongside Noah Deegan to my right. Noah, what do both teams need to focus on for this game tonight? Um, they both need to focus on stopping the other team offensively. Both are very, very well-rounded teams offensively and it's going to take a couple of defensive stops for both teams in order to help them advance in the game. All right, the game will be starting soon for the starting lineups and national anthem. So we will be right back after the national anthem and starting lineups for the Hornets and the Wildcats. <laughs>
And we're back for the Section 3 Class B Boys Lacrosse Final between the West Genesee Wildcats and the FM Hornets. As Ryan Kemp steps up to the faceoff for the West Genesee Wildcats. West Genesee was 11-6 overall this season and 5-3 and in the SEAC Metro, while the Hornets were 6-11 and this season and 1-7 in the SEAC Metro. As West Genesee wins the... Wins the faceoff as Kemp takes it down the side. Kemp sends it over to Liam Burns. Liam Burns driving to the inside. Standing on the outside, sends it back to Patrick Winton. Ryan Mahoney takes it down the side, looking for his options. Sends it back to Linton. Linton trying to drive to the inside. Sends it back to Mahoney. Save by FM. Good offensive possession there right by the uh, Wildcats. Unfortunately, it was not the shot they wanted. And And we are sorry for this delay. We had to had some technical difficulties. We had to switch seats because I could not see the play. As there's some offensive movement and looks like West Genesee has taken advantage of this possession. Great job there by number 13, Brendan Patrick's reading the pass and breaking it out for the Cats. And it looks like there's a whistle. It looks like the possession will go back to West Genesee. Linton taking it on, sends it over to Mellon. Behind the X West Genesee working it. River Udamal on the side, trying to work around FM defenders, turns back around, looking for options. Sends it over to Linton. Linton trying to drive on the outside, sends it over to Burns, and Burns just shoots wide. And FM takes possession of that. As, as it's sent up the middle, and it misses, and it looks like Linton's going to take possession of this back. Burns on the front. He shoots. He scores. Liam Burns from, from it looks like Ryan Mahoney will make this a one nothing game for West Genesee with 9.40 left in the first quarter. Great pressure ride there by the Wildcats as they force an incomplete pass. It's an easy pickup for Ryan Mahoney and Liam Burns is wide open in front. And a, 
Looks like number 21 for the Wildcats. Ryan Kemp will be taking the face off once again. And it looks like the Hornets will win this as Luke Weisinger comes back with it. And Jacola in the net. Fires it over to Means. Means taking it up the sideline. Means driving on the outside. The long stick defender. Sends it over to Cogliandro. Cogliandro and it's saved by Dylan DeSena on the Wildcats. Good hustle there as the Wildcats pick up the ground ball and they will have possession of it. What? No, I got no one. And it looks like Burns will take it up the side again, driving through the middle as he sends it across to Odomal. Odomul. And it looks like it's saved by, Col by the goalie for FM. Zachary Spencer, as is picked up by Tashale Kelly. And back to Bilotti on top. Sorry, the rosters are not right in front of me right now. We are having even more technical difficulties with this. It's not very thoroughly planned out as West Genesee is working it behind. Udmuld sends it back to Bilotti. Bilotti up top to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi working around, cuts back, and is looking for his options as he sends it back to Kelly. Kelly working with it, trying to waste some time as he brings it behind the net. Kelly trying to make a move as he takes it around the outside and sends it back to Bilotti. Bilotti trying to work to the inside, cuts back, moves to the inside, he shoots, he scores! Nolan Bilotti makes it 2 nothing West Genesee, and it's 7.34 left in the first quarter. West Genesee with a two-goal lead. Off Nolan Bilotti and Liam Burns. That's a great dive there by Liam, uh, Nolan Bilotti behind the cage. That's a great move. As it looks like West Genesee will now send Jonah Vormwald to the faceoff. To faceoff against James Adonzio. As the whistle is blown, the faceoff is taken, and FM will come away with it. Scooped up by Charles Adon. As there's a tussle behind the net, and it looks like West Genesee will pick it up. Benjamin Chamberlain sends it over. And it looks like it's flown out to Patrick Linton. Linton driving through the middle, looking up his options, setting up the attack as it's sent over to Liam Burns. Liam Burns down to Udamul, back to Burns, back to Linton. Linton sends it up to Jack Mellon. Mellon over to Mahoney. Mahoney down the side to Kemp as Kemp goes behind the net to Udamul. Udamul back up to Mellon. As it's over to Charles Lockwood. And it looks like it will be out of bounds. West Genesee's ball. Great start there by the Cats. They've been playing very well defensively. They have not let FM get any shots or anything off really right now. It's a great start by the Wildcats. As Linton tries to work it on the outside. He's attacked by defender Tyler Hutchison. Ryan Mahoney takes it. Tries to make something up on the outside. And sends it back to Udamul. Mellon gets a hold of it. Driving to the inside. Jack Mellon tries to shoot. And it's blocked and saved by FM's goalie, number 32, Zachary Spencer. Zach Spencer, there, right, great save there, but forced the pass to Jordan Lacombe, and it's picked off. And it looks like 
River Udamul will score for the West Genesee Wildcats, making it 3 0 with 5.54 left in the first quarter. West Genesee with a three goal lead against the FM Hornets. And it looks like there's some difficulties on the scoreboard that we'll have to take care of. We'll take care of that in between quarters. It is 3-0 West Genesee. As Jonah Vormwald will win the faceoff for the Wildcats as he sends it back to Kelly. Kelly working it on the inside and goes outside. The Wildcats have been playing very well, but you cannot give enough credit to the faceoff, man. They've been, they've been playing very well, and they've won almost every faceoff so far. As Lockwood takes it outside, sends it behind the net to Udamul. Udamul back up to Burns. Burns up top to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi trying to fire one inside. And it passes back behind the net to Udamul. Taking a time to look at his options. As he sends it over to Lockwood. And FM will get control of it, but he slips and falls, and West Genesee will maintain control as Udamul scoops that one up. As he sends it up top to Bilotti. Bilotti turns around, looking to the inside, but sends one outside. As Udamul takes behind the net. Apologies, that was not. Now it's over to Kelly. Kelly over to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi trying to work to the inside and he sends it back to Kelly. Kelly over to Bilotti. Bilotti fires one inside, he shoots, he scores! 4-0 West Genesee with 4.23 left in the first quarter. And it all starts off of a stumble by George Lacombe and it's unlucky as the Wildcats capitalize on another possession they gain. West Genesee is sending a lot of different people to take faceoffs for them today as they send Ryan Kemp back to the faceoff. Let's see if he can win this after West Genesee just scored four in the first half of the first quarter. And it's sent back and it looks like West Genesee will win this faceoff with Benjamin Chamberlain back. And he drops it back to Nelson Hudgens. Hudgens up to the side to Chamberlain. Chamberlain trying to make something with it as he sends it over to Mahoney. As FM picks that one up. Trying to make something with it. Driving to the outside on the midfield as he sends it over. Looks like our roster might be a little incorrect here for Fateville Manlius. Cogliandro takes it behind the net. It's gone over to Madden. Madden to Angicola. As FM's taking it outside. Back behind the X. And it's missed. And it looks like FM might lose possession of this ball. And it's turned over to West Genesee. As Patrick Linton takes the ball up the middle, tries to curl around FM defenders. He does it and it's sent over to Jack Mellon. There's a huge possession gone there by the FM Hornets. They needed that to get on the scoreboard. Mellon to Mahoney. Looks like Mellon's going to take it again. Mellon back to Mahoney, Mahoney back to Mellon. Back to Mahoney. Mahoney trying to make something with it. Looks like West Genesee is just trying to make some offensive moves here. Playing a little pitch and catch. As Mahoney tries to drive up, he sends it back to Mellon. Mellon trying to make his way around. As it's dropped, and he scoops it back up just in time, and it looks like he drops it again, but Fayetteville Manlius will send this one out of bounds. And West Genesee will retain possession. Ryan Mahoney will start off with the ball.
Mahoney sends it back to Udamul. Udamul trying to make something of this ball. It's attacked by Daniel Stark. No, that is not Daniel Stark. That is Charles Adon Adonizio. Sorry, my apologies. We did not get pronunciations before this game as Mahoney takes it behind the net. Mahoney trying to do something as some heavier rain will start to fall down here at Michael J. Bragman Stadium in Cicero, New York. FM's really, not FM, West Genesee is really trying to isolate FM's midfielders here below, below the goal line. As he sends it back to Mahoney. Mahoney trying to make something with it. He sends it to the middle. He shoots. He scores. West Genesee's goal scored by Charles Lockwood, the freshman on West Genesee's attack, which makes it 5-0 West Genesee. West Genesee uses the two midfielders behind the goal line, and they will easily find their attackman Lockwood wide open in front. Ryan Kemp back on the faceoff for the Wildcats. It will be won by West Genesee as Kemp gets a hold of that ball. Kemp driving down the sideline. Kemp drops it back to Udamul. Udamul back up to Kelly. Kelly trying to make something with it. As Giannuzzi is substituted in. Kelly making his way around the net. Stops back up to look as Giannuzzi tries to follow him around. Kelly sends it to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi tries to cut back. Cuts back again, and he's trying to move up the side. Giannuzzi circling back around. Cutting to the inside now. Giannuzzi fires, and that one's way wide of the net. West Genesee is really trying to isolate uh, FM's midfielders right now. As you can tell, they're doing a two-man game behind the cage, and they're looking for the wide-open cutters through the slot. As Kelly makes his way around the net. Kelly, with his speed, cuts back. Rifles one, and is just wide of the net again. West Genesee will retain possession. Good drive there, good dodge there by Ch Kelly as he just comes wide of the net. As Giannuzzi tries to fire one. And it's loose, but West Genesee will take that back up. And it's saved by FM's goalie, Zachary Spencer. And that will end the first quarter. West Genesee with five, FM with zero. We are going to take this scoring error on our screen and we are going to switch it. We'll be right back. And we are back. Thank you to Owen O'Keefe, who just helped us change the scoreboard there. We did not know that that would happen until the game started. The score was messed up. West Genesee leads by five with 12 minutes left in the second quarter.
as for FM, Dylan Venditti will take the face off and it looks like Jonah Vormwald will be back on the face off for the Wildcats. As Vormwald wins the face off for the Wildcats and he sends it over and it's now in Ryan Mahoney's possession. Mahoney cutting back, sends it back to Liam Burns. Burns over to Linton. Linton over to Mellon. West Virginia's done a very good job so far at winning a bunch of faceoffs. I don't think they've lost any so far. And they've been taking key possessions away from FM, and they've been taking advantage and have five right now. Linton over to Mellon. Mellon trying to drive to the inside, and it's blocked by Spencer. West Genesee will maintain possession here. And it looks like Liam Burns will start off with the ball. A lethal scoring threat for the Wildcats. Burns tries to go around the outside. As he sends it back to Linton. Linton over to Udamul. Udamul trying to drive to the inside. And he sends it back to Linton. Linton over to Mahoney. Mahoney driving to the outside. Tries to send it through the middle and it, there's no one there. As Udamul races to the ball, it will be in FM's possession. That's good defense there by FM as they force an incomplete pass, which makes them get possession. Weisinger taking it through the middle. Sends it over to Cogliandro. Cogliandro on the outside. Sends it over to Madden. Madden to try and make something of this offensive possession for FM. As John Ange Angelicola is on the field and he gets the ball. Trying to make his way out the outside. Sends it up to number two on FM, who we do not have on our roster right now. And it looks like West Genesee will get possession back as Sam Rosa gets the ball, the long stick for West Genesee as he sends it over to the goalie, Dylan DeSena. DeSena fiddling with it as he sends it up the field. Straight to Udamul. Udamul in the midfield, trying to make his way around. To the outside, he sends it to Linton. Linton to Burns. Burns in the middle, he shoots and is blocked by Zachary Spencer. An amazing save by Zachary Spencer. As FM's now racing it up the field. FM from the side, they shoot and it goes way wide of the net on that one. With 9.45 left in the quarter. Zach Spencer there with a huge save as it keeps them from getting six, keeps the Wildcats from getting six goals. As DeSena sends it up the field to Crowder. Crowder and it looks like FM will regain possession of this ball as Hudgens takes it through the middle. Back to Cogliandro. Cogliandro with it, and there's a flag on the play. Cogliandro tries to make his way through the middle. It's blocked by DeSena. FM and West Genesee racing towards it. West Genesee gets possession, and a whistle is blown. Looks like this will be a one-minute penalty. Let's see who it's on. Looks like it'll be on West Genesee, a one-minute penalty. On it looks like number 22, Nelson Hudgens. As West Genesee will be a man down for one minute, 8.59 left in the first half. This is a huge chance here for the Hornets to get on the board and produce something. Cogliandro starts off with the ball. Cogliandro sends it to the side, down, back up to John Angelicola. Number two sends it back to Adon. Back up to number two on FM. Number 39. Back up to number two. As he sends it wide to Cogliandro. Cogliandro trying to make his way around. West Genesee, number 18, Liam Burns. No, number 16, Jack Garvey. 
with an amazing defensive play. We'll start to send it up the middle to start FM or start West Genesee's attack as Patrick Linton takes the field and it's knocked away in FM. Well, it looks like there's a chase for it. FM will knock it back in bound and Cogliandro will start to set up the attack for FM. That's a huge ride there for uh, Cogliandro of FM, knocking the ball free and getting FM another key possession. Cogliandro sends it up to Angela Cola. Angela Cola to two, back to Angela Cola. Angela Cola sends it back up as Sam Rosa takes the field for West Genesee. West Genesee making their moves around the net. Behind the net as Joseph Hathorne takes it wide. It's knocked out of Hathorne's stick and now it's going up the midfield. FM racing back to it. And they'll maintain possession as he's bodied by Brendan Patrick on West Genesee and the possession will remain with Fayetteville Manlius. As Charles Ad Adonizio will send it back to Thomas Conley. Conley taking it wide. Sends it behind the net to Madden. Madden trying to go back, curls back to the outside as Coleandro takes it behind the net. Coleandro up the middle and the pass misses to Adonizio. And it's scooped up by Angela Cola. As making its as they're make, as FM as Madden's making his way behind the net, he curls back, cuts over to Coleandro. Coleandro over to Charles Adonizio and he sends it just wide. We're gonna get a pronunciation on his name after this half from our wonderful PA announcer Daryl White because I cannot keep saying this incorrectly. As Madden takes it behind the net. Madden looking for his options. He sends it right to the middle and it's an amazing save by DeSena for the Wildcats as the Wildcats get possession and look to start their attack again. That's a great possession there by the Hornets. It's just an unlucky, that's a very good save by DeSena as just unlucky. Dylan DeSena sends it up the middle. Liz Mahoney sends it up way over to Liam Burns. Liam Burns on the empty net, he shoots, he scores. Liam Burns with his second goal of the night, which makes it 6-0 West Genesee for the Section 3 Class B Boys Lacrosse Final. One thing you've started to notice here is FM will rush Zach Spencer out and they will have him as an empty net. They will do a 10-man ride and they will have an empty net so Liam Burns takes advantage of it and finds an open net. As it's 5-0 Fayetteville Manlius. Jonah Vormal, and it looks like there's a false start on FM, and West Genesee will get possession of the ball as Giannuzzi takes it up the side. Giannuzzi cuts back, sends it over to Kelly up top. Kelly over to Bilotti. Bilotti looking to make some movement here. Bilotti cuts back, sends it back to Kelly up top. Kelly making some little movements here on the side as he's guarded by Michael Hans. Hans really riding on Kelly as Kelly tries to get around him and he sends it up to Bilotti. Bilotti on the outside, cuts back and it looks like he's going to send it back to Kelly. To Shale Kelly on the side, kind of making his way around the net. Kelly cuts back on Hans, sends it up the middle, behind the back he shoots and scores. 31, Charles Lockwood, an amazing goal behind the back on Zachary Spencer, which makes it 7-0, West Genesee. That's a great offensive possession there. T. Kelly and Nolan Bellotti make great moves as uh, T'Challa Kelly makes a nice dodge, finds Lockwood wide open on the crease, and that's a beautiful finish. I have not seen a goal like that in the lacrosse season so far as Ryan Kemp is back on the faceoff for West Genesee. Melissa blown and looks like possession will go to, they're still fighting for it. As West Genesee is trying to pick this one up, they do. And there's a whistle blown and possession will go to FM. As Coleandro picks the ball up. Coleandro sends it to Conley. 
Conley making his way around. Cuts back. Coleandra moving to the outside as it's sent up to Penoyer. Penoyer facing some tough defense as he sends it back to Conley. Conley over Coleandro. Coleandro to Madden. Madden trying to make his way around the net. Tries to cut back. Madden shoots. He scores. Robert Madden makes it 7-1. West Genesee still leads by six, but FM has scored. Ended the shutout that Zachary Spencer had going for the West Genesee Wildcats. Or Dylan DeSena, my apologies, had going for the Wildcats with 4.33 left in the first half. That's a huge goal there by the Hornets as it shows they have some life left in them. That's a face off. West Genesee wins it as Crowder takes the ball behind. Sends it over to Hudgens. Hudgens over to DeSena. DeSena sends it over to Garvey. Garvey back over to Hudgens. Hudgens up the side to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi rushing towards the middle. Giannuzzi sends it back to Lockwood. Lockwood up the middle to Kelly. He scores from the 25-yard line. Tashale Kelly, the sophomore midfielder from West Genesee, makes it 8-1 with 4.06 left in the first half. That's a great, great breakout there by the uh, Wildcats as it leads to a wide open fast break and Tashale Kelly finds the back of the net right there. West Genesee running away with this game, leading by seven. And it looks like Jonah Vormwald will win this with ease as Vormwald takes it up the side, sends it over to Burns, back over to Vormwald as he's knocked down by Coleandro. And there's a flag on the play. It looks like this will be on Louis Coleandro for FM. Let's see, I'm gonna guess this is going to be a one minute penalty. Oh, the tent is blocking our view here. And it looks like play will resume. Udamul takes it up the middle, sends it over to Mellon. Linton back to Mellon as Burns takes it back to Mellon. Mellon is getting back. Burns goes to the outside, back to Mellon. Mellon fires one, it goes way up and out. I'd love to see the exit velocity on that if we had that. Charles Lockwood sends it over to Burns behind the net. As Burns takes it. Fires it through the legs of Zachary Spencer. His third goal, a hat trick in the first half to make it 9-1 West Genesee. Great ball moving on man up by F, uh, West Genesee as uh, Lockwood and Burns play a game of pitch and catch and Burns is wide open on the crease, which is an easy shot for him. Jonah Vormwald takes the face off again for West Genesee after just running through them in the last part, in the last face off. So blows face off taken as Vormwald wins this one again with ease as he sends it back to Kelly. To Shale Kelly up in the midfield, racing back and sends it over to Sam Rosa. Rosa the long stick loses the ball as Kelly picks it up and a flag is blown. Let's see who this is on. I'm going to assume it's on West Genesee. And this is on Let's take a look here. Sam Rosa, the long stick. And that looks like West Genesee will be a man down for I'm going to assume a minute. It is a one minute slashing penalty on Sam Rosa as FM takes possession. Madden sends it wide. Colian, no that is not. Angela Cola takes it. Angela Cola over to Adon 
uh, Donizio, the name I can yet to pronounce, over to Conley. Conley over to Madden. Madden to Coleandro. Coleandro's knocked away by Nelson Hudgens on the West Genesee Wildcats, but Coleandro maintains possession of that ball, sends it wide, up to the middle. FM fires blocked, and there's going to be a run to this play, and West Genesee is trying to get possession of this ball. And Benjamin Chamberlain was the one racing to that ball, but FM will retain possession here. Great hustle there by FM, showing that they do not have quit right now, and they're not going to quit just yet. Conley taking the ball up top. Conley sends it wide to Coleandra. Coleandra behind the back over to Madden, and Madden just shoots wide, and it's out of bounds. 2.09 left in the first half here. West Genesee leads 9-1. to one. No timeouts have been taken by either team yet. You might see that in the last minute of the play as Conley takes it up. Conley racing around the side. Conley running through the middle. Fires in and it goes in! Thomas Conley scores on Dylan DeSena to make it 9-2. to FM still down by 7. 151 left in the first half. We might see a timeout by either the Wildcats or the Hornets here. I wouldn't be surprised if either team took a timeout here. Yeah, that's a huge man up possession there by the Hornets. As they get something started, they get a couple of shots off, and Conley finds the back of the net with a great dodge on the left side. Ryan Kemp will take the face off for the Wildcats. And the ball is loose. And Kemp will get possession of this ball. He's taking it up. He shoots, and it's just wide of the net. Ryan Kemp almost had a goal there on Zachary Spencer. And FM will have possession of this ball as Zachary Spencer will get it tossed to him. Zachary Spencer sends it back. FM racing it up the side. And it looks like there will be a timeout on the FM Hornets with 122 left in this first half. We will be, Noah, you have anything to say if we, before we take a break? Um, FM's been showing some pretty good life after uh, Jenny's got up by uh, eight goals, and I'm expecting Jenny to, not Jenny, FM to make a huge possession here. I'm expecting them to maybe get a goal here. Yeah, well, we'll be right back after this timeout. And we are back after the FM Hornets timeout. West Genesee 9, FM 2 with 122 left in the first half. As West Genesee is taking the field, FM taking a little bit more time to take the field. And it looks like it will be FM ball for the last 122 in the first half. Joseph Hathorne takes the ball, sends it behind the net. It's over to Coleandra from Madden. Coleandra sends it up top to Conley. TJ Conley working around. Trying to work up top. Conley trying to work outside. He shoots and it goes wide of the net again. FM will retain possession as Coleandra will take it. That's a good start to the possession there as FM's moving ball very well. Good dodge by TJ Conley, unfortunately just wide. Lewis Coleandra behind on the X. Coleandra up wide. Looking at his options as he sends it back to Madden. Almost intercepted there by Nelson Hudgens. As Coleandra takes it wide, 
and he fires right under the bar to make it nine to three FM. The comeback team FM is nine to three with 41.9 seconds left in the first half. It's a huge possession there by the FM Hornets. They get the great ball movement. They back up the shot they missed, and now they have another goal on the board, and they cut the deficit to only six, which is a huge thing for them. Ryan Kemp will take the face off for the West Genesee Wildcats. As James Adonisio, again, I'm sorry for these pronunciations, we'll take it for FM. As Kemp will win the faceoff, and a whistle is blown. And there's a timeout for the West Genesee Wildcats. With 35.3 seconds in the first half, the Wildcats will take a timeout. One timeout left for each team. I, and no, you have anything to say with this time I mean, there's only been about 30 seconds passed since the last one. Um, no, not really. I'm expecting uh, West Genesee to kill most of the clock and get a shot off with about five seconds left. And they're going to be hoping for a play off the uh, timeout, and they're going to be looking for a goal. Yeah, I mean, I think West Genesee, they just let up three goals. Um, Louis Cole Leandro with that great goal under the bar. Uh, they're really having some momentum, Fayetteville Manlius, and I mean, West Genesee is letting down a little bit here. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. Only time will tell. 35.3 seconds left. He's probably trying to get his players under control here, finish out this first half, go back to the locker room, or go back to that halftime talk, and just talk things over before they can get back in this game. Yeah, I think FM's been doing a very good job. They've been taking care of the ball very well over the last at least six minutes I've seen. And they've been playing with some passion. They've been playing with some momentum. And I like how they're playing so far. Yeah, I mean, both teams are playing with a lot of passion here. It is the section finals for Class B lacrosse. West Genesee just dropped down to Class B this year. Uh, the game after this will be the Baldwinsville Bees versus the Liverpool Warriors Section 3 Class A boys final. West Genesee, or er, Fayetteville Manlius dropped down to Class B, I believe in 2019, was it? Yes, it was 2019, if I can remember. I, th I believe it was 2019 as both teams will make their way back to the field for the last 30 seconds of this half. Let's see who starts off with the ball here. It will be West Genesee's ball. As Jack Mellon tries to rush it up the sideline and he's pushed out of bounds. And it looks like, could there be a timeout on the field? There's a, there's a timeout from the West Genesee Wildcats again. W only less than 10 seconds, about, I think, eight seconds since the last timeout. West Genesee's taking another timeout. Jack Mellon, one possession with that ball, got chased out of bounds by Fayetteville Manlius defenders. And West Genesee called another timeout. No timeouts left for the West Genesee Wildcats in the last 27 seconds. Could we see another one from FM shortly after play resumes from this last timeout? Now, um, I don't know. I don't. I believe they could if West Genesee shoots it early, but I don't know if they will. I think FM had a great ride there as they forced um, Mahoney to get out of bounds and they forced a timeout. Uh, forced Coach Burns to call a timeout. And it looks like both teams will take, will go back to the field as Mellon will start where he was just pushed out of bounds as he races through FM defenders this time, racing up the sideline. Mellon sends it over to Lockwood. Back over to Mellon. Mellon up to Bilotti. Bilotti back to Mellon. Back to Bilotti, a little pitching catcher there. As he sends it over to Burns. Burns on the outside. Cuts through, puts it through the legs of Zachary Spencer. Four goals in the first half for Liam Burns as he just beats the buzzer. One second left in this game. One second away from that goal, not counting. 10 to three, West Genesee. They're leading by seven, entering the entering halftime here. Not even the third quarter, or not even the fourth quarter, halftime here. FM really needs to step it up here. That's a huge goal. FM was building great momentum heading up until that moment. They had a great ride before the second timeout Jenny called in back-to-back -back consecutive timeouts. That's a huge play by Liam Burns to get to the goal, make a great dodge, and find the wide open lane. As Jonah Von Wald and James 
Adonisio will take the face off. The whistle's blown and that is halftime. The West Genesee Wildcats lead 10 to three by seven. Liam Burns with four goals in the first half. Luis Coliandro with an amazing under the bar goal for FM. No, I know we've just been talking about the same things for the past, I don't know, 10 minutes of this game because there's timeout after timeout. Uh, but what do you think both teams have to do entering the third quarter? I think West Genesee just needs to stop the momentum. I think FM has been playing very well over the last six minutes before the last goal was scored. I think FM made a gr not FM West Genesee made a great ride, uh, great ride, great clear, and now Liam Burns got the final goal at the end of the half. And I hope that uh, I don't hope, but I'm willing to see that maybe Jenny will stop the momentum that FM is building up. FM I think needs to build up more momentum. I like how they've been playing as of the last six minutes. They've been playing very hard, very tenacious, and they've been playing with some passion. Very good passion. They didn't show in the first quarter and for the first half of the second quarter. I've liked how FM has been playing over the last six minutes, except for that last goal. I think FM could really build on this as well after the final six minutes they just had. Yeah, West Genesee and FM FM really having a lot more momentum in the second half of that first half, that second quarter there. Uh, they're riding that wave. Let's see what their coach says at the halftime. West Genesee 10, FM 3. We'll be right back for the second half of this game.
And we're back after halftime. West Genesee 10, FM3 to start off the first half. Noah, can you read me some of Liam Burns' uh, stats from the regular season? He had four goals in this game, three co goals in the second quarter alone. Well, Liam Burns led the team in both goals and assists. As he had 35 goals in the year and 37, not 37, 27 assists, which is the team leading. Um, he was very vital in the team's first half dominant start, and I'm expecting him to do even more in the second half. That is awesome. 12 minutes left on the clock for the third quarter to start it off. Jonah Vormwald will take the faceoff for West Genesee. For FM number 39, Charles Adonisio. As DeSena takes it, sends it wide. Hodgins will carry the ball through the lane. As West Tennessee takes it, sends it wide to Udway, and he scores. River Udemal, Udmul. I'll have to get a pronunciation on that too. Scores makes it 11 to three, West Genesee. That's a huge clear by the uh, Wildcats right there. FM did not be able to ride uh, cleanly and it was an easy break for the Wildcats. They find River Orba wide open in the left lane. Ryan Kemp will take the face off for the West Genesee Wildcats. The face-off will be won by the Wildcats. As he's knocked off the ball, but West Genesee will take a Crowder racing up the side. Crowder sends it over a high jump for Udmul. Oh no, not Udmul, my apologies. Charles Lockwood. As Lockwood sends it behind to Udmul. Udmul to Burns. Burns. Behind the net, sends it up the middle, deflected over to Nolan Bellotti. Bellotti over to Giannuzzi, Giannuzzi up to Kelly. Kelly racing on the side, shoots it, hits the crossbar and it goes out. There's also a goalie change for Fayetteville Manlius. It's under the papers, there it is, Aaron Lee. Step in net. as it's taken up the side by West Genesee. Raising up the side, cuts back. William Means. Means sends it over to Ken Cannon. Ken Cannon sends it over, knocked down. There's a flag on the play on Nelson Hudgens as he knocks number nine, Robert Madden, down to the ground. It looks like that'll be a minute penalty for West Genesee. Good clear there by the uh, FM Hornets. The long stick midfielder brings it out, finds a wide open man. They draw a penalty, and now they're going to go on the man advantage. 10.06 left in the third quarter. FM sends it up top. Playing around with it up top, Conley sends it over. Conley sends it over to Angela Cola. Angela Cola up from the top. Sends it over to Hathorn. Hathorn up top. Sends it over to Edenizio. Over to Madden. Madden in the middle sends it back up to Coleandro. Coleandro up top over to Conley. Conley sends it just wide. Back up to Coleandro. Coleandro wide over to number 22, Angela Cola, and Angela Cola sends it wide, but FM will retain possession. FM's being very patient with the ball. They don't want to cough it up, throw it away, and have a turnover. It's sent over to Angela Cola. 
Angel Cole up, up to Conley. Back over to Coleandro. Coleandro wide and his shot just wide, but is picked up by Robert Madden. No goal. As West Genesee will retain that there's no goal. The goal is called off on Fayetteville Manlius as West Genesee will get possession of that one and it sends it up wide to Udmul. The no goal happened just due to the player being in the crease. That's why it was called no goal there, if anyone did not understand. Thank you, Noah, for that. I actually had no idea why that was called off. As Linton had it, but now it's Mahoney. Mahoney over to Linton, Linton over to Mellon. Mellon back up to Linton, Linton over to Mahoney. Mahoney chugging wide, sends it just wide. Bounce shot. Mahoney there with a full head of steam there. Almost gets a bouncer right off the, the uh, ground. Almost gets another goal for the Wildcats. Linton up top. As it's just sent wide by Patrick Linton, and it will be FM Ball. And it looks like West Genesee will now get possession of this ball. Or no, it looks like they're sending him back. It looks like they're sending number 25, George Lacombe, back with the ball. There's a send over to Conley. Conley misses the ball, chasing in the midfield. Conley gets it in center field. But no, he drops it, and West Genesee picks it up. Jack Mellon sends it wide over to Burns. Burns rifles one sidearm. He shoots and scores from the 15-yard marker, Liam Burns fires one sidearm to make it his fifth goal of the game. 11 to three, no, 11 to three, 12 to three, West Genesee. The scoreboard was not up there, there we go. I was, I was thinking, second thinking myself there, second guessing myself, Noah. Yep, West Genesee with another big ride and they force another FM turnover and another West Genesee possession and as again, the Wildcats take advantage of another possession and get another goal. Looks like Ryan Kemp will take it for West Genesee. They're fighting for it and Kemp wins it. Kemp sending it back over to Burns who just rifled that nice goal over to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi trying to cut to the inside, backs up. And Giannuzzi sends it to Bellotti. Bellotti over to Burns. Burns taking it behind the net, tries to cut back, tries to force himself through, sends it over, just fired wide. Charles Lockwood almost with an amazing goal there from Liam Burns, an amazing pass across the crease from Liam Burns. West Genesee will start off, Liam Burns starting off with it on the side. That's a great look there by Liam Burns. He find, finds Lockwood, his teammate, cutting wide open. That's a great look, great pass. Burns sends it up the middle, sidearm he shoots and scores another one. Nolan Bellotti with the goal from... Liam Burns, an amazing pass, makes it 13 to three. West Genesee, 7.06 left in the third quarter. I'm gonna go check and see with our wonderful scorekeeper, Owen O'Keefe, who's usually on the North Star Network to see if there is running time at all in sectional games. Armo takes the ball. And we got confirmation that it's 12 goals and the clock will continue to running. So two more goals for West Genesee and the clock will not stop running. As Jack Mellon takes it, sends it over to Linton. Linton, Linton up high to Burns. Burns tries to fire but sends it up to Mellon. Mellon drops it but sends it back over wide to Mahoney. Mahoney through the middle. Shoots and scores. Another one for West Genesee as River Udmul scores once again for West Genesee. I believe that's his second of the game, making it 14 to three. One more goal and West Genesee will run the clock in the section final game. That's great ball movement there by uh, West Genesee. They find the wide open lane and Udmul makes a great cut through the middle and is wide open for what should be a, a good shot for him and he gets it in the back of the net. Looks like there is a flag. Oh, it looks like. 
hard to see what's going on down here between the officials and the coaches. And it looks like FM will just immediately take possession of this in West Genesee's zone. They will start off on the attack. Bounce shot right in front of them. And it goes way over from Adam Koss. As Madden takes it off to the side. Madden sends it up to Angela Cola. Angela Cola rushing inside. Cuts it back and sends it back to Conley. Conley over to Adonisio. Coleandro gets it behind the net. Trying to make something with it. Sends it up to Madden. Madden fires one sidearm and it goes wide of the net. And it looks like FM will retain possession. Louis Coleandro behind the net. Takes it wide, looking for his options. As he sends it behind. FM racing up the middle. He's getting a lot of defense from West Genesee, they are not giving up. There's a flag on the play. It looks like that could be on John Giannuzzi Jr. As the flag is knocked to the side by Ryan Mahoney. As Edenizio takes it, sends it high. Angela Cola trying to race around West Genesee defenders. He takes it wide, shoots bounce shot just wide, another flag. And play is stopped. I believe that this could be two men down for West Genesee. And it looks like both will be slashing is what I just saw. As Giannuzzi uh, slashed uh, the FM player pretty hard there. I don't know if that should be a flag or not. I couldn't really tell. I couldn't really tell how hard of a slash So it one was. of them is on Giannuzzi, and it looks like the other one is on Sam Rosa. For West Genesee. I, that'll be two men down for West Genesee for one minute. 5.08 left in the third quarter. FM will automatically start off with possession here. This is a great time for FM to capitalize on a two men down as they're up by two guys and they should take advantage right here. And it looks like Coleon. No. Angela Cola would start off with it as he sends it over to Adonisio. In the middle, knocked out of his stick. West Genesee taking possession. Knocked around by Madden and Adonisio. And FM will regain that possession from West Genesee. As they're working on the X, Coleandro behind the net. Sends it up. Sidearm, another wide shot from FM. And Coleandro will go back there and start off with the possession. Good fight by the Hornets as Nelson Hudgens make a, makes a great check. As, but the Hornets make a great ride and force another incomplete turnover. Madden over to Coleandro. Coleandro wide. Fires one right up high. Angela Cola sends one over the net. It flies over. 429 left in the third quarter. As Coleandro fires one and he shoots and scores. Number 18 for FM, Joseph Hathorne. Fed off one from Louis Coleandro to make it 14 to 4. Only cutting it down to 10 goal deficit against West Genesee in the Class B Section 3 Boys Lacrosse Final. Great pass there by Cole Andre. He looked like to be, a, he looked off uh, the West Genesee defender and made a great cross crease pass to find his wide open man. Off the face off. And it looks like it's being fumbled around there as Conley hits the deck pretty hard. FM will take possession of it. Khan taking it wide, sends it up to Conley. Conley through the middle to Lacombe. Fires one above his shoulder. J Joseph Hathorne with another goal. 14 to five, West Genesee only leads by nine now. Oh, but still a lot to come back from for FM, but they are known as a comeback team in the section. They could very well make this a much tighter game they're uh, Fayetteville Man is playing with a lot of passion right now. They're not giving up. They're not showing any resilience to let relinquish the lead and relinquish the Class B title as they won it last year. As it looks like 
Kemp will be back on the faceoff. Faceoff being won by FM. As Lacombe takes possession of the ball, the great long stick defender from FM as he sends it up to Angela Cola. Sent back to Conley. Conley racing to the middle. Conley fires one just wide and high of the net again. A lot of these shots, FM, could be, have a, they have a lot of velocity on them, but they can't hit the net. It seems to be missed opportunities for the Hornets, but they still have five goals. And I it's Conley, or Coliandro, my apologies, sends it up to Conley. Conley trying from wide. He shoots. It goes above Dylan DeSena's right shoulder. And TJ Conley will score another one for the Hornets to make it 14-6, an eight-goal deficit now for West Genesee. They were being close to running the clock in this game. They were one goal away from that, and now it's 14-6 to just a few minutes later, 321 left in the third quarter. That's a great dodge by TJ Conley as he sees West Genesee's defender comes out and approaches him very hard, and he makes a great dodge, great move, and makes a great shot right over the top of the shoulder. Ryan Kemp will be put back on the faceoff for... The Wildcats. It's hard to see who's on the faceoff for FM, and it looks like there will be a whistle. West Genesee will get possession. As Giannuzzi takes it. Giannuzzi takes it wide. Looking for his options. A lot heavier rain coming down here at Michael J. Bragdon Stadium. People are putting their umbrellas back up. It's a sea of umbrellas here in the, in the stands. It's, looks like there's some movement back there from Giannuzzi. As Giannuzzi tries to m put it up the middle, sends it through the middle, knocked away FM, gets possession of that ball back. As Nicholas Barr had it. No, my apologies. That was George Lacombe that had it. I was looking at the wrong roster there. As he sends it up to Edenizio. Edenizio looking for something to do with it as he sends it up to Angela Cola. Angela Cola back to Conley. Conley back to Angela Cola. Angela Cola taking it wide. As he takes it behind the X. As he fires it right through the middle and it goes right over Louis Coliandro's stick. But FM will get possession, but it's out of bounds. West Genesee ball now, as Jack Garvey will take possession of it, sends it over to Dylan DeSena. DeSena sends it wide. As it goes over to Kelly. Kelly showing his hops off there as he sends it up to Linton. Linton racing off the side, getting around FM defenders. A great save by FM's new goalie, Aaron Lee in net. Lee with possession of the ball now. No, my apologies. That is not, that is Angela Cola that had the ball. Angela Cola over to Conley. Fires another one, Joseph Hathorne with his third goal of the quarter. 14 to seven, FM is riding a wave of momentum here. Three unanswered goals from the same player on FM, Joseph Hathorne, making it just seven goal deficit. That is amazing. And I really think that it starts just because of the defense. Great save by Aaron Lee. In the previous possession, it was a forced turnover, and FM got the ball, almost got another goal just out of bounds. As it looks like West Genesee will be taking a timeout as the F as FM reduces their deficit. West Genesee was looking to run the clock, and now it's 14-7, to seven, Noah. Surprise. Um, FM is playing with a lot of momentum. They're just steamrolling right now. They're playing with some momentum. They're playing with some confidence. They're moving the ball very well. They're not throwing it away as they did start at uh, the first quarter. Now they're playing with some confidence. They're playing with some composure. They're keeping the ball, and they're making some good shot selections, and they're finding the back of the net. This is amazing for FM riding that wave of momentum. 131 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back after this timeout.
And we are back from the timeout, West Genesee 14, FM 7. A lot of people thought that this game was over, but it is far from over. 131 left in the third quarter. West Genesee just took a timeout there. They have one timeout left in the half. FM with two timeouts left in the half. FM has not utilized any of their timeouts. They might wait till the fourth quarter to utilize those. As the faceoff is won by FM. Michael Hans with the ball. Whistle blown. Timeout FM. FM's using this timeout. I thought, I just said I thought they would use it in the fourth quarter. They used it now. One one timeout for the FM Hornets. One timeout for the West Genesee Wildcats. Noah, anything else that has happened in the last two seconds that you think could be useful for either team? Um, no, I think FM made a, got a huge face-off win as they will get the ball to start off after this timeout. After the timeout, and wait, I'm interested to see what will happen. Will FM be able to break the ball out, or will West Genesee be able to have another successful ride and force another turnover? And it looks like there's a lot of rain coming down at Michael J. Bragner Stadium. It's downpouring here. Our papers are going everywhere. This is not ideal conditions for a lacrosse game, especially when the Section 3 Class A boys lacrosse finals right after this. I wonder if the, those will be uh, postponed. I, usually you don't see a post. You usually don't see a postponement on lacrosse games from weather, but. But you never know. This window, the wind is picking up here. Our papers are going everywhere. And we're going to close one of the windows here so rain does not get over our computers or technology. It's getting a lot harder to see from the rain on the windows as FM will start off with it. Bounces out of his stick. As he fires it across the field, Coliandro gets it. Lewis Coliandro gets it, tries to send it through the middle, ball bobbled, and West Genesee will get possession of it. Udamul will get it, takes it up the side. Due to the downpouring rate, it will be harder for players to catch the ball, be able to shoot it, and even be able to run as a simple fact, just because of the rain will affect the field as well as the player's sticks because of the mesh. It looks like Unimul trying to make something happen on Conley here as he gets around Conley. And he tries to send it back. Conley gets it. FM gets possession of that ball. Noah, you were right on that. You were completely right. It's going to be a lot harder for them to catch the ball and to maintain possession of the ball. Yeah. As Angela Cola takes it up the middle. Angela Conla sends it over to TJ Conley. Conley playing with the ball a little bit. Conley sends it over to Penoyer, and a whistle is blown. It will be West Genesee ball. All my papers are flying here from the wind. Everything's getting wet, and it is the end of the quarter. West Genesee leads 14 to seven. We are going to go consult with some people and see if we need to close this window or not and see what can happen because of this awful weather. We'll be right back at the start of the fourth quarter. Thank you. 
and we are back for some fourth quarter action of the Section 3 Class B sectional finals between the West Genesee Wildcats and the Fayetteville Manlius Hornets. This is the final quarter of the section finals. The b game both teams have waited all year for as West Genesee will win possession of that ball. We'll win the faceoff. As it's sent back, West Genesee taking their time. Patrick Linton takes the field. Sent over to Charles Lockwood. As West Genesee drops the ball, it's a lot quieter here without that stadium noise in. The window's really locking us in, but technology is more important than anything else. As West Genesee's racing around, he gets around that FM defender. He's rushing in. That's number 30, Ryan Mahoney. And there is a weather delay. There is thunder at Michael J. Bragman Stadium. It's a downpour here. There will be a weather delay on this game. 11-10 left in the fourth quarter. This is unbearable for the athletes to really play in, unbearable for the parents. Thunder will delay this game. Rain will not, but thunder and lightning will. This can be posed as dangerous to the players in Section 3 Athletics, and the referees have called the game. For now, there is a delay. A postponement until the weather can get better, Noah. What what do you think the teams are going to talk about during this weather delay? They're going to talk about getting active right away if the game is resumed. I think it will be resumed. They want their team to stay locked in and focused um, from the time it stops now to when the game will actually resume. I think both teams need to sharpen and keep themselves straight as when the game starts, it'll be any moment because it'll, it'll probably go by and Probably a split second, it feels like. Let's check the radar, Noah, and see what this can look like. I'm on the weather app right now. It looks like rain is forecasted for the next hour. It looks like there is thunder over us right now. A little bit of a thunderstorm, but it looks like it can and c should be resolved. Uh, I think it will be a 30-minute weather delay. The North Star Network is not pleased with this, but the safety of the athletes, officials, and parents in the game is much more important than anything else. We will be right back after this weather delay. Thank you. 
Double beef steak? No. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All these people left all their beef on the beach. Why did someone left their booty?
Thank you. 
days. The Jewish identity was not named. The doubt it was. They, they never, they never, they never played the game they were supposed to play. And Raphael pulled away 10 7, 10 in the fourth quarter. There were teams that were comfortable up in there. This was like a huge score. I mean, but they, how about kicking at the end?
And we are back here live on the North Star Network after that 30 minute rain delay. 25 seconds left in the warm up. They are back on the field. 6.57, this is when the Baldwinsville uh, Liverpool game would have started. You can see the Baldwinsville team on the sideline there, on the track, ready to go uh, while there's 11.10 left in this game. It's wonderful to be back as Liam Burns starts off with the ball and sends it behind. Udwe, Udmul sends it up to Linton. It's getting hard to remember the names after that long break. Linton up top. Linton making his way around, sends it back up to Mahoney. And Mahoney will maintain possession of that as he sends it over to Jack Mellon. Mellon over to Burns, Burns on the outside, sends it straight over to River Unwul and he drops it and goes right back behind the net. He drops it back to Burns, Burns on the X. Burns having a phenomenal game with four goals, I believe, or five goals, five, five goals in this game. An incredible stat line for Liam Burns, who, Noah, he was the top scorer on West Genesee, wasn't he? Yes, he was, top goal scorer and he had the most assists on the team. Junior on the attack. As he's knocked, but he maintains possession of the ball. As he sends it up the middle, just a bounce shot wide by Jack Mellon. That was uh, that could have been an incredible alley oop sort of goal from West Tennessee and Jack Mellon there, fed by Liam Burns. Yeah, Jenny's keeping the ball very well so far. To start off after the break, and they're keeping their composure, not turning the ball over, and they're just keeping it. As Mellon sends it to Mahoney. Mahoney back to Mellon. Mellon and Mahoney have been a pair out there today, always out at the same time. As he sends it straight through the middle to Patrick Linton, he shoots, scores, 15 to seven, West Genesee. 9.43 left in the fourth quarter. Good ball move over there by uh, West Genesee. They find the open man right in the middle of the area, uh, offensive zone, has a great look, turns around, fires it right into the back of the great shot. A great, great shot as Ryan Kemp is back up on the faceoff for the West Genesee Wildcats. And we can see James Edenizio uh, on the faceoff for the FM Hornets. I finally got that pronunciation from our wonderful PA announcer, Daryl White. As Ryan Kemp wins the faceoff with ease against Edenizio, and he chases, he runs it up the sideline, cuts back on Edenizio, and he's in the midfield right now trying to cut through, carving through on that attack, and he sends it back to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi taking his time with the ball as he sends, goes right through the middle and he drops back and sends it back to Lockwood. Lockwood back to Udmul. Udmul to the side to Burns. Burns on the side trying to make something happen here. Cutting through the middle, a sidearm shot bounces in and it goes in the net, 16 to seven West Genesee. I don't know what happened in that 30 minute rain delay, but it is phenomenal for West Genesee. 16 to seven, 902 left in the game. Yeah, Drew, they've been very, very patient, West Genesee, they've been very patient with the offense. They're not looking for the spectacular over the top play. They're looking for the patient play that'll work best for them. Burns makes a good dodge in and he finds the open lane and takes a great shot. As Ryan Kemp's back on that face off. We've been seeing a rotation between Kemp and Vormwald. As there's a massive chase for that ball. And West Genesee runs away with it as Mahoney takes it up. Right through the middle, sends it over to Burns. Burns fires again, seventh goal of the game. Liam Burns, seven goals in the game. This is incredible for West Genesee. Great faceoff win by Ryan Kemp, and he finds Liam Burns wide open. He takes a long range shot that finds the back of the net once again. As we're back on the faceoff, it looks like they put Jonah Vormwald on, and Vormwald runs through again with the faceoff win. As it's up top to Bilotti. Bloody and Umold, Udemol, uh, doing something with it as Tashel Kelly gets it. Kelly running it on the outside, taking his time, and he sends it down behind the net to Udemol. 
Udmul, <laughs> he makes Daniel Stark stumble a little bit as Udmul sends it through the middle, deflected off, and Aaron Lee will take this, this ball. He sends it up to George Lacombe. Stefan's racing it up the field. So we can see Charles Adant at Anizio. Back over to Coleandro. Coleandro sends it up to Conley. Conley doing something with it. Trying to make something happen. Waiting for the play to develop. Runs on the inside. And, <laughs> and he makes number 17, Benjamin Chamberlain, fall a little bit. As it's sent over to Madden. Robert Madden trying to make something happen. Curls around. And he falls on the slipperiness of this turf, but gets right back up. Madden getting chased by Gene Uzi. I don't think it's necessarily the players getting their quote unquote ankles broken as people now would like to say. I think it's more of the turf being terrible and getting very, very wet due to this terrible condition so far. That is, that is actually very true. As Madden tries to get it, and it's saved by Dylan DeSena. DeSena sends it up, West Genesee bobbles it a little bit and sends it way over to Sam Rosa. Rose up the middle to Linton. Linton fires it across the field and he just grabs it to Liam Burns. Liam Burns sends it over to, to Udmul. Udmul up to Linton. Burns tries to cut through the inside as Mellon grabs and sends it over to Mahoney. Mahoney and Mellon, a great pair out there as Jack Garvey enters the field on defense. Linton playing with it with Mellon a little bit. Mellon over to Mahoney. Mahoney racing it up the sideline. Mahoney shoots and it just goes wide of the net. 6.28 left in the game. 17-7 West Genesee leads by 10. I, I'm a big believer in comebacks, but I believe that this game is too far-fetched for FM to come back from. As FM takes control of that, George Lacombe sends it back to Aaron Lee. Lee dancing with it a little bit back over to Lacombe. Lacombe with the long stick. Gets past Udmul and sends it up to Daniel Stark. Stark over to Coleandro. Coleandro tries to grow it back to Madden and now he does back on the X. Madden trying to get around the net, facing some resistance from Nelson Hudgens. Hudgens really giving Madden some of that resistance. He slips on the turf and he sends it back to Angela Cola. Angela Cola on the side. Trying to take it behind the net. So you can see a lot of the parents entering back from their cars after the rain delay. Some stayed in the lobby, some went back to their cars. As Angela Cola's behind the net, sends it up, tries to send it up to Madden, and it misses Madden's stick. And it will go back to West Genesee. Charles Lockwood with the ball. Good defensive possession there by F uh, West Genesee as they force an incomplete pass and force another turnover for the FM Hornets. Lockwood over to Udmul. Back to Burns. Burns over to Mellon. Mellon shoots and scores. Jack Mellon with a goal to make it 18 to seven. West Genesee with 5.13 left in the game. One more goal and West Genesee has that wave of momentum that they needed to run the clock. This is four unanswered goals for the West Genesee Wildcats. FM has not answered one of them. West Genesee came out of the locker room just feeling aggressive. You saw them jumping around when they were warming back up after the break and you, you can see now that they're proving it. They got four straight goals and they got all the momentum in the world right now. Jennifer Ormald wins the faceoff for West Genesee as Benjamin Chamberlain grabs it. Chamberlain sends it back to Dylan DeSena. DeSena running with it a little bit. And he sends it over to Tashel, Tashel Kelly. Kelly makes FM moves with it a little bit, and he's taking it into the attack. Kelly sends it over to Bilotti. Bilotti sends it over to Giannuzzi. Giannuzzi back to Bilotti. Bilotti with it up top. Bilotti getting around wide, trying to set up behind the net to the right corner. Bilotti makes a move with it, and he's still around the net. Curls back again, cuts back. 
and he cuts back again and sends it back to, to Shale Kelly. Kelly makes an FM defender move with it a little bit, gets it behind the net. Kelly getting really pushed by FM defender David Cancon. Can Con Cannon. That's a tough name to say. Kelly sends it up the middle to Charles Lockwood, and it goes out of bounds. West Tennessee is really trying to milk, milk, milk the clock away. Sorry for my poor English. As they're just trying to waste time and trying to s preserve, preserve this lead. If you don't know, this happened in the West Genesee um, CNS game, which you are part of the CNS varsity lacrosse team, where West Genesee in the last six, seven minutes of the game just pretty much stalled with the ball. Yeah. And we're seeing some FM offensive movements here. As Angela Cola sends it up to Coliandro. Coliandro over to Conley. Conley back to Coliandro. Coliandro going behind the net. Coliandro tries to make his way around the net, passes it up to Conley. Conley sends it over to Penoyer. And he's chased down with the ball, and there's a flag down, but Coliandro maintains possession of the ball. As Pollock takes it. Pollock on the side, sends it over to Depoy. Depoy up top. We're seeing a lot more players that haven't been seen in this game as West Genesee takes control of it. Nelson Hudgens had control, but there's a flag on the play for West Genesee. It looks like that might be unnecessary roughness. I can't tell. Could be a flash. It's a 30 second penalty for pushing unnecessary roughness. Might not be a penalty in lacrosse, but I am not the most up to date person in lacrosse penalties at all as FM gets some offensive movement here, sends it over to Conley. Conley over to Coleandro in the middle. FM grabs it, sidearm shot, and West Genesee gains control of that ball again. Mahoney rushing it down on the side. Mahoney shoved to the ground by FM, and there's a whistle blown, and West Genesee will get possession of that ball. Ryan Mahoney will start off with it. 2.29 left in the game as he sends it up to field to Linton. Linton rushing on the side. Linton cuts it back. Sends it over to Mellon. Mellon over to Lockwood. Lockwood back up to Mellon. As Mellon rushes up the side, and he's kind of going behind the net. Looks like they're going to be wasting time. As Cooper Penoyer is following him, Mellon cuts back, grabs, drags Aaron Lee out of his net as he sends it back over to Shell Kelly. Kelly up the middle, intercepted by FM, and it's a loose ball, and it's popped up in the air, and West Genesee will gain control of it with Liam Burns grabbing the ball. Liam Burns on the outside. Behind on the X, 126 left in the section finals for Class B. Liam Burns being heavily attacked by Tyler Nathan. West Genesee's doing a very good job at killing the clock and trying to preserve their lead even more. Liam Burns still has the ball, running the clock out with 107 left. Liam Burns takes it in on Aaron Lee and goes right back behind, sends it behind the back. He fires and he scores! Number 31, Charles Lockwood, a behind-the-back pass from Liam Burns. Charles Lockwood seals the deal, 18-7, 19-7. That's the 12 goals that they need to run the clock, 57.7 seconds left in the game. It looks like West Genesee could very well be your sectional, Section 3 Class B champions. It looked as if Burns was going to just kill the clock, just stay behind the net there, but he makes a behind-the-back pass that nobody saw coming, and he makes a great find, and Lockwood's wide open on the crease, has a great spin around it, and just makes it find his back in the net. West Genesee is, wins that face-off. Benjamin Chamberlain up the side, passes it back to Ryan Kemp. Kemp over to Mahoney. 
and Mahoney rushes it in. Mahoney being chased down by Jacob Porzusek. 30 seconds left. Mahoney on the side. Mahoney on the empty net, he fires it back over to Patrick Linton. 20 seconds left. Patrick Linton behind the net. And he's standing on the side. Eight, seven seconds left. Udmul takes it up the side. Three, two, one. And the West Genesee Wildcats are your Section 3 Class B champions. Beating the FM Hornets 19-7 to seal the deal. Liam Burns with seven goals. Yes, seven seven goals. goals in the Section Finals. Baldwinsville is your champion heading to regionals. West Genesee, you mean? West Genesee is heading to regionals. My apologies. A 12 goal win in the section finals for West Genesee. The West Genesee parents celebrating the student section going insane. Helmets off, gloves off, sticks in the air. A good, good season to FM and a great, great season to West Genesee. Both teams fought hard. It looked like FM could have come back there, but the rain delay was too much, and West Genesee just rode with it. With five unanswered goals from West Genesee. The West Genesee Wildcats have won it all going into regionals. They are celebrating on the field. This is a great day for West Genesee parents, West Genesee uh, the athletics. A great day for the athletes, the coaches, everything they've put into this season has paid off in the end as West Genesee has taken it home with that 12 goal win. No one have anything to say before we cut to the ceremony? Um, no, I don't really have anything to say. Both teams have some great passion and congratulations to the West Genesee Wildcats and the Class B Section 3 lacrosse title. This is phenomenal for West Genesee Athletics. Once again, a great season to both teams, the Fayetteville Manlius Hornets and the West Genesee Wildcats. Going insane on the sideline right there. Right after this ceremony, the Baldwinsville Bees will take on the Liverpool Warriors for the Section 3 Class A Finals, the championship. And only time will tell how close that matchup will be. So right now, congratulations to the West Genesee Wildcats. A great season of the Fayetteville Manlius Hornets. We are going to cut to the ceremonies right now. No, no, I'm, I'll be right there.